Welcome back, folks. We are moving right along into our second Dirty Harry franchise review. As promised, I'm turning to the page. Unorganized chaos here. That's what we do on this low-budget channel. 1973 Magnum Force. This movie came out two years after the original. Directed by Ted Post. And I do believe that I reviewed one of his films on my old channel. I think I reviewed Beyond Planet of the Apes. Pretty sure he directed that one. And I kind of gave an overview of a bunch of the Planet of the Apes in my old channel over the summer. This movie has a two hour and four minute runtime. It dragged on for me. It it is a little too much. The original film was an hour 42 and this movie clocking in at over two hours by a scooch. It was just not the best movie. We see John Milius, who we've mentioned before for a couple of other recent reviews. He wrote a screenplay and then Michael Cimino, who was known for his attention to detail and wrote the screenplay for Deer Hunter. Again, the studios are modifying everything. But this particular story of Magnum Force was based off of an original unused script for the first film that Mer Terrence Malick, he had pitched an idea to kind of give the Dirty Harry more credibility as not being a total lawless vigilante by showing that there are these rogue group of San Francisco Police Department motor officers that go around killing all the city's criminals, judge, jury, and executioner. Reminds me of the movie The Star Chamber, starring Michael Douglas. I need to get a copy of that and review it here. Anyway, not my favorite film. It was successful at the box office. I couldn't find how much it cost to make, but it was a $44 million budget. Uh, again, John Milius, whose screenplay for the original film didn't really go anywhere, and then he wrote for the Judge Roy Bean, and he seems to be notorious for criticizing people changing his screenplay ideas. He hated this picture, and he said it would have been a far better movie if the original director of the first film, Don Siegel, had directed it. And I can only agree with him. Uh, Ted Post and Clint Eastwood fought throughout the picture over the different scenes and Clint Eastwood's one-take policy. Um, Post alleged that Basically, at this point, Eastwood had become a prima donna and wanted everything his way. And he was originally offered the directorial position, Eastwood was, but he turned it down. Uh, Eastwood felt that one shoots were okay. And even if you only got 70% of a scene laid down on film, th that was enough for the audience. I just, I don't know. This film seemed totally unnecessary at times. Like, did it really even... It felt like they wrote a story and then they kind of shoehorned the Clint Eastwood character in there to make it a franchise film. Uh, didn't necessarily... I don't know. It just seemed like a lot of the times in earlier parts of the film, the Eastwood character wasn't even really, I don't know, necessary. I don't want to say necessary, but I feel like it just did not resonate with me like the first film. A lot of the scene cuts are not great. The movie jumps around and there's a lot of stuff going on. They're bringing in all these other characters. So I am going to rate this film very low. I'm going to go two and a half out of five. Rotten Tomatoes would be probably more in the high 3% range. If you use my three, one to five scale, they're 77%. IMDb, 7.2 out of 10 came out on Christmas Day in 1973. Obviously, like I said, it was a commercial success. But it just... There's just so much going on. And I just feel like this movie... I don't know. You know when you see a movie one time and you know if it's a classic or not? This is a one watch for me. So if you're comparing it to the first film two years earlier, which I was five out of five, and that's an iconic movie, this movie just seems like fluff. And there was just too many rewrites, things that there was a little bit of a controversy in one scene. Uh, a prostitute gets killed by her pimp by being forced to inject dressed Drano. Apparently that was very controversial. They, the John Melia said they laid out too many things when there should have been a whole different way of portraying things that didn't need to show the ultimate end goal. Um, and then the villains, I just found it kind of cheesy. There's this roving band of traffic cops wearing mirrored aviator sunglasses. 
and they were all academy buddies together. There is some laughs and there is some good shootout scenes, but it's just so over the top. And, you know, Clint Eastwood's character, basically, he just, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like this movie, again, I'm just repeating myself because I don't have a lot else to say about it. Oh, oh, here's one other thing. The movie was originally going to be called Vig Vigilance, but John Milius was a huge gun enthusiast and he had written so many scenes of shooting competitions and using uh, the uh, Dirty Harry 44 Magnum Smith & Wesson Model 29. They ended up changing the film to Magnum Force. And this is the stretch that I feel like. He also had to tie it into the first film because I feel like this movie doesn't really need to, I don't know. It doesn't need to exist. It, they're just trying to tie it into the first film by having the Dirty Harry line from the first film. How many shots did I fuck? fire five or six do you feel lucky do you punk they're trying so hard to make it tied into this franchise it just the whole movie seems it could have been a different movie without dirty harry is what i'm saying but then at the same time i see what they were trying to bring a little bit more humanity oh and there's also the scene where john milius hated the fact that he kind of always envisioned a dirty harry character as kind of a lone wolf unattached his wife had died in a head-on collision with a drunk driver as mentioned in the first film and then in this movie they have him engaging in a sexual relationship with a downstairs neighbor in his apartment complex where she's the one being the initiator and he felt like that was kind of sullying the lone wolf vibe and i felt like that was a total garbage call too so there's a lot of things i did not like about this film Cut scene cuts like I mentioned. The, the color is really good. I I they I love the Technicolor in this picture. The bright skies. It's not so gray, but overall as a whole, complete garbage. Forget about it. Wasn't really a fan of the other Ted Post take on the Planet of the Apes. I think he did part two or part three, and those movies were totally forgettable as well. And Ted Post claimed that his career was stymied after this picture, and he blamed Clint Eastwood. But I don't know. Perhaps it's just his directorial style that doesn't resonate with me. Until next time. Uh, uh, ah, we're doing it live. Until next time, folks, we will see you then. Thanks for coming along on a video review journey. We will review the next film because I got to go through all five now. It seems that's the way we're going here. Thanks for coming along.